the class is currently being recorded. Thank you. So, in the absence of any questions, we can go straight to what we have today. Now, this class is for back end, and um, I'll be teaching you back end. And it's expected that by the end of the project or by the end of the class, you should be able to build a complete back end project for yourself. Like, build a complete back end project, maybe for yourself, maybe for industry, maybe for company or for client. However, you should be able to build something. And she still can't hear me. Uh, can you hear me now? So, bearing in mind that you will be building projects, you should understand how my assignment will be. My assignments are not going to just be oral assignment or copy and paste assignment. They are going to be project-based assignments. So that by the end of the project or the class, you should be able to build a project. Now, the cohort one, we have people who did very well. They can build, they can build projects for themselves, they can build it for other clients, and at that, they are being organized into a group. Some of them will be selected by Access Bank, and others also selected by CareerX to build projects in groups together, real life projects. So you also, you'll be expected to build projects by the end of this class. Not to this class, by the end of the whole back end class, you'll be expected to build a final project. That will be the project to judge you by. So please don't miss the classes. A back end is very easy. Programming and coding is very easy. Okay. I don't know what other link to send to you, but this is just a telegram call so if you can't find it leave i would suggest you close your telegram then open it again it's a telegram call you should see how to join very easy to join the call i don't um how do i explain it i'm looking for the perfect word but just close telegram and join again that's 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 Uh, if you can see my screen, please confirm that you can see my screen. Anybody, anybody at all, if you can see my screen, so I want to be sure that it's not. Um, if you can see my screen, drop. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I will continue. Like I said, you will be expected to build projects, real life projects. It could be a doctor's booking appointment project. It could be a wallet system. It could be an e-commerce. It can be anything, but you will be expected to build the whole project, the whole backend yourself. So bear in mind that it's not going to be theoretical, copy and paste like that no you have to build something okay that's one part now the second thing is in order to understand backend now who is a backend developer now a lot depends on the backend developer if you are already in the group then you should be able to join uh how do I explain this? Let me check it on my mobile. Mm. 
There is a video chat at the top. Okay, I will continue, but please bear with me. I am being slow so that we have everybody on board and we can all continue together. Um, when it comes to coding and when it comes to back end, especially, a lot depends on the back end developer. A lot, and I will explain to you why a lot depends on you. But one key thing when you are learning is if you miss one detail. It becomes difficult to follow up but if you are always in class it will be a roller coaster for it to be very easy for you every or even though there will be little challenges here and there but if you don't miss the class it is always going to be easy when it comes to back end and i can guarantee you that okay i have 16 participants okay okay that's yeah that's true but you also you always see it if you're using for web okay let's try for web um telegram okay i my telegram for web is not enabled yet so i can't try that okay please join i am waiting for you all right, I was trying to explain who a backend developer is. Now, a backend developer has a, rough, a lot of responsibilities when it comes to any company. For example, let's take mobile apps. Now, when you talk about backend development, we're not just talking about backend for a website. We mean backend for websites, backend for mobile app, backend for dashboard backend for any software at all so that's what we're learning here backend build so the backend covers for everything so sometimes i could use um, a website to explain it sometimes i could use a mobile app to explain it so it doesn't mean that i am only teaching backend for mobile or only backend for websites so that being said i want to explain uh, the responsibilities of a backend developer using a mobile app and for example a financial mobile app let's say any of these bank apps imagine if you are trying to make a transfer or maybe money has been sent to you but it is not reflecting in your account who do you think you would hold responsible now a lot of us we go to social media and start tagging the bank by doing that you are holding the social media handler responsible some persons will be calling the customer care and some will show up at the bank that they want to contact the manager branch manager any of those persons but actually the person who to be held responsible is the back-end developer because when it comes to that part where you talk about functionalities behind the scenes things that go on behind the scenes that is the job of a back-end developer and the back-end developer is responsible for making sure that every transfer is reflected on both sides payments are being made people are able to log in people are able to open the app that those things those are the jobs or will i say the responsibilities of a back-end developer using a mobile app if you come to a website, um, let's say an e-commerce website, for example, you will always open the website. Now, I'm not sure there is at any point you open a website and you see the first screen not opening. The landing page, which is the first screen, will always open. And 
the part where you have the job of a backend developer is making sure that products you are able to see all the products that you want to buy for example you click on laptops you should be able to see um, a display of different laptops in a situation where you are not seeing the laptops and it keeps loading and loading and loading and loading and loading and that is the responsibility of a backend developer or say you are trying to make payment now you have been able to add product to your cart and you want to complete your order by making payment and the payment is not going through that is the job or the responsibility of a backend developer or maybe completing the whole thing the whole process those are the responsibilities of a backend developer so that being said i want to I want to believe, is there any other person who cannot hear me? Where is, uh, where is his name? Um, Wisdom, are you on this call? Yes, Wisdom is here. Victoria, are you on this call? Yes, Victoria is here. So, thank you. Now, let's proceed. Now, in order to understand, I'll open my jam board and I'll open... A popular website let's see which of them which of them which of them uh, gone with jumia so i will create a new jump board here i want to explain a developer now there are three types of developers there's a front-end developer there is a back-end developer and there is a full stack developer now Please, if at any point you have a question, I created a topic here called, sorry, sorry, the question and answer topic. I will keep this one open. This is the one I will keep open. So if you have any question, please don't drop it in this general group. I may not come here. Drop it to the question and answer topic because this will always be open to attend to your questions. Okay. Say I have something like this, and I want to explain what a front end, a back end, and a full stack developer is. So I will start by saying um, I have this here. This is a website. I have this here, another part of the website, and I have something here another part of the website now this here is a front end and here i will call it be for back end and here i will call it db for database okay i'll keep this like this so i'll be able to see your questions All right, so I have this like this. What I want to do is this here is considered the, as the front end. Here you consider this as the back end. And here you consider this as a database. Now, a website, building a website or um, has two different stories. To the part of a developer, it is more like building a house. To the part of a user is more like going to a restaurant. So I will explain it from the user's perspective. So as a user, if you walk into a restaurant, now the first thing you want to see is how conducive the restaurant is, how beautiful, how um, classic. You just want to grade them by what you are seeing, the colors, the arrangement, the size, and all of that. Now, that restaurant is considered as your front end. Now, it may be a restaurant, it may be a bar, but you are grading them based on what you are seeing. When you sit down, you are expecting a waiter to come and attend to you. The waiter will come, take your order. Maybe I want Coke and I want rice and fried rice, put it together and bring to my table that you've placed your order 
Now, the waiter will go to the counter and check if what you've ordered for is there. If they have it in the counter, he or she will serve you immediately. But if they don't have it, they will notify you to wait. Then the waiter will either, maybe the waiter or another waiter will go to the store, bring out what you've ordered for, cook it, prepare it, then before they serve to you. So that is the idea of a website. Now the restaurant you are going to be sitting on is considered this as the front end. But the waiter that is coming to take your request, we know them as APIs. So the waiter that is coming to take your order, we call the API. So they take your order and then back. Let me do this way. I think it has to be, um, sorry, which one is, which of them is an eraser. Uh, okay. Sorry, I want to remove this. All right, it's a one-sided arrow. So the API here, you call the waiter, the waiter that is coming to take your order. So they will take your order, go back to the counter, which is the back end, check for what you ordered for. If they have it there, then they come back to serve you, which is what uh, is here. So here now, I have a website. It's looking fine, everything arranged properly, and so on and so forth. Now, say I want to see electronics. This is electronics. I want to see electronics and um, pick one of them, say TV audios, accessories, TV audios, or maybe here, smart TV. If I click this, this is more like me placing an order. So I am saying I want to see smart TVs. So if I click on it, an API is making a request, which is why you see this thing loading here. So a request was made and then response was sent back. Now I can see all of this. So the meaning of API, application programming interface. Now as a backend developer, that is your job. But I will come to that, what application programming interface is and how to build it because you will be building it. So by clicking, I made a request here and now I can see all TVs. Now these informations are not stored here on the website. They are stored in a different server in the cloud. So clicking will be you making requests to that cloud and fetching all the information that are on that cloud based on what you ordered for. Okay, please, if you want to ask a question, I have a question and answer topic. It will always be open to attend to your question. Please drop your question there so I don't miss your question. So that's what, that's a simple movement now you come to the front end you are looking for something you click on it now an api will take that request to the backend and say hello we have a user that wants to see this and see that and then the backend says yes we have that then the api will take that response and send it back to you but if what you want to see is not currently stored yes yes it's not currently stored here that API needs to go into needs to go into the database, get it from the database, and return to the backend before sending it to you. So, as a backend developer, your job is to build from here to here. Whereas a front-end developer will be building from here to here. So the API, the backend server, the database are all the responsibilities of a backend developer. Whereas the front-end, which is the display 
of all the information coming from the back end. Now, if you go to this website, you are going to see a list of different items. If I come to the home page, you see a list of different items. These items are not stored here. Um, um, let me find the right word. They are not hard coded here on this site. And which is why most times some products could be out of stock and some are also in stock. So it, they are all coming from the backend and the database. They are not here on this site. But things like the logo, these icons, the nav bar, they are all here. Then these are uh, these images, they are all here. But for when it comes to these products, these products are not here on the website. They are coming from the backend. So your number one role as a backend developer is to build information, build uh I'm looking for the right word now. To build items that will be displayed on the front end, which is why the back end is considered as the brain or the heart of any software. And you must be very good. You must be very good before you are allowed to handle a back end. Let's assume that um, everybody, I'm not saying banks will fail, but I'm just saying let's assume I create an app and it's a financial app, a bank app, and I call it uh, Sam Dave, for example. And all of us, we are using Sam Dave. And you wake up one morning, you can't log into Sam Dave. Imagine you can't log into the app and your money is there. How would you feel? And the funny part is, you don't even know who the backend developer will be. All you know, you just know the the maybe the, the social media handler or the H or, or not the HR, the MD or the customer relation. Those are the persons you know. The back end and the server. Now you can call the back end the server. Sometimes we use different words interchangeably. You can call the backend the server. Sometimes the server is a part of the backend. So before you start building functionalities on the backend, the server needs to start up first. How do I explain it? Now, you're going to understand this better when we start working on the backend proper. But just consider the server as a part of the backend. The backend is the whole package, the API, the server, the database, all the whole thing put together, you call them the backend. But the server is a part of the backend. The same way the API is a part of the backend. The same way the database is a part of the back end now the server is i will explain that later let me not go there so do you have any question on my explanation i know this is a rough diagram but do you have any question you can drop your questions now and also if you don't have a question drop it thumbs up so that i continue If you have a question, please drop your question. If you don't have a question, drop a thumbs up. Now this, let me confirm that I'm actually recording now. Sometimes I do forget. Yes, I'm recording the class. Now, the recorded version of the class should be dropped maybe today, maybe tomorrow, but uh, it will be edited first. So we'll not just send a rough record to be edited first and then sent to you. Okay, what goes into the backend? Now, let's take a mobile app, for example. If you want to log into a mobile app, the first thing you want to do is type in your email or phone number and your password. Now, these days, some persons use fingerprint. You can use the fingerprint. So the front end, we capture your email and your password and send it to the back end. So the back end 
will be responsible to verify that that email is correct and that password is correct i would then give a signal to the front end to allow you access so that is what goes in that's like a brief of what goes on on the back end if you want to log in now let's say you want to make payment the front end we capture the amount you want to pay we capture your bank details we capture your name capture all of that and send it to the back end the back end will verify if the amount you currently have in your bank account is up to or greater than the amount you are trying to withdraw it will check that you are the verified owner it will also check that your card details are correct and have not expired and then make the deduction then generate a transaction details save it on the database and then send a signal to the front end to tell you that this transaction has been completed so that's another um, thing that goes on on the back end so but generally i consider the back end to be the brain and the heart of any software without it this front end will just be showing up like that it's not going to be functioning no functionality no nothing you're just going to be seeing images and pictures without detailed functionality so that being said what is the work of the server now you are going to understand the work of the server when we start building the back end because you will definitely build a server but let's let, let me uh, um just try and explain it in, a, in an everyday life most times you discover that you hear that um some persons want to apply for nyc and they will tell you oh i need to be awake by 12 a.m that time um it's very easy it will be fast and there's a not not a lot uh, a lot of persons doing it at that time so i will finish my i'm sure of finishing my application in time or early now the part the part of the back end that keeps the back end running 247 without sleeping that is called the server so the server will be up both at midnight both at midday both in the morning making sure that everybody that is supposed to be attended to is attended to that is the server the part of the back end that keeps running the whole logic every day every hour every minute every second without sleeping that is considered the server now if it goes down or if it goes to sleep people will not be able to assess anything on the software so that is the part we call the server but but sometimes we actually generalize it and say the whole backend is the server and of course it's understandable the whole backend is the server so any more questions now the back end and the server is it different from a hosting server uh, now good thing you know what a hosting server is and also you know that we also have a server on the mobile app but if i go in details trying to explain it to you we may end up confusing including those who have absolutely no idea what the back end is so that being said uh, if this is your first time learning back end please i want you to drop a thumbs up at uh, wisdom i will come to your your question maybe today or in a subsequent class i will explain that so but if today is your first time learning about back end i want you to drop a thumbs up this is your first time learning anything about back end yes good now in our last cohort the first three the first three best students it was their first time learning back end it was absolutely their first time learning and i think the second best it was his first time writing codes ever he has never written codes ever so there is absolutely uh, uh how would i put it um no disadvantage 
So that means it's only one person. This is your first time learning backend. Really? Just one person. So every other person you are saying. No, 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 no. Don't drop your thumbs up on the general platform. Drop it in the question and answer topic. That's how I know you are responding to me. Drop it in the question and answer topic. Okay, this person is your first time learning backend. That's great. That's great. Great. All right, like I was saying, there is no disadvantage. Um, I understand that for some person, this is their first time actually writing code. So, which is why I will be very thorough to explain everything in detail. And what you will do for me is, if there is anything I do as in, in code or maybe in explanation that you don't understand or you cannot do it, please don't allow me cross over. Now, I'm talking to those who this is their first time learning code, like it's your first time writing code ever. If there is anything I will do, because I'll be building backend, you will also be building backend. Forget today's class might be more of talking and talking, but after today, or maybe today, we we'll start writing codes. So please, if there is anything I will do, and you cannot do it, don't allow me cross to the next thing. Call my attention, please. Because um, you are not going to be considered as a backend developer if you cannot build a complete back end and my job here is to make sure that you can build a complete back end and i know it's possible because i have been teaching sorry i didn't actually introduce myself uh i'm a full stack developer meaning i build both the front end and the back end i also build both web mobile dashboard and all of them so uh, i have also been teaching too so but i'm using the last cohort as a reference point I know people who did very well, very, very well. Before the deadline, they've completed the whole backend project. One of the backend projects, I, I think I should I will open it up here. Let's go to Google Classroom. Sorry. Um, the Google Classroom should be your friend because this is where I'll be passing in information or passing out. I was supposed to say passing out information. And I think I need to change my laptop. I need to switch my laptop, but let's let's continue with this. Okay, and uh, we go here. Let me go to this one. And I'm looking for single project. Single project three. I just want to pick one of the project. Though this is three. Okay, I'll go to four then. Group project four. This is for library. I'll go to group project two. Yeah. So here you have this. Now I'm using this as example to explain to you what a full backend project will be or what it should be. Uh, sorry. Okay, can you hear me now? All right, thank you, thank you. So I think I switched before. Um, so let me just switch here. All right. Sorry, I had to switch, but I, I'm back now, and I will go over here now.
All right. So let's go to classroom again. Okay, just a minute and maybe something. All right, here and group project two. All right. So for those persons who are saying it's their first time, I wanted to show you this more like an expectation from my own end. Um, I will teach you. I will make sure you understand everything I'm teaching you. But by the end of the class, I will expect you to build a project. That is how I will rate you. Now, apart from the fact that you'll be submitting assignments every week, by the end of the whole class, you will build a full back-end project. And so this is a back-end project that Cohort 1, people for Cohort 1 built. And I gave them a few weeks to build this. And before the end of the whole week, the deadline, some persons have actually finished the whole project. Now for others, I gave, an, I gave extra days and then they were able to complete this project. So your first time, um, is not a disadvantage or how, what is the right word? I'm looking for the right word now. So you will be able to do something like this, if not exactly this. So what is this? This is like a project where you can book for medical appointments. So you'll be able to register, which is why you have user registration here, and you can also log in at any time here. Now, some of these words here, you may not understand them because for now, you are not used to the back end. But with time, you will know everything that is here on the screen. The second thing is you should be able to hash user password. So even if the user's password are exposed, hackers cannot use them because the passwords are hashed. The second thing will be to define a user, define the doctors, and also define appointment. And also, uh, um, doctors should be able to update their profile with their name, specialization, availability, and also whether they'll be booking. So users should be able to book an appointment based on the date that the doctor sets as the availability date. And also, um, ensure that only patients can book. So only those who are registered and signed up can actually book this system. Now, this is an example of a back-end project. And it's a real-life project. A lot of persons work on projects like this and they launch it out for production. So as a back-end developer, you should be able to handle projects like this alone. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's your first time learning how to code or not. That is why you have me here. So what I will ask you to do is please do not miss classes. Our classes are 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. every Saturday. 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. every Sunday. Now, if for any reason a class will not hold, I will inform you early enough that the class will not hold. And also, if there will be any need to reschedule, I will also inform you early enough that we'll be rescheduling a class for a later date or so. So that being said, do you have any question? If you have a question, please drop your question. If you don't have a question, fine. Now. We are going to understand what the backend is. But before we jump into writing codes for the backend, we we'll need to understand what the front end is also. So I will start from the front end, explain the front end, write a few codes with the front end. You will also write codes on the front end. We'll test it, see that it's working before we move to the back end. Because your back end, you are building it for front end developers. Um, how would I say, if you are cooking food, you should also test what you're cooking because 
you can't be cooking food for some persons and you will not eat it. You don't know how it tastes. You don't even want to see how it will taste. So, which is why we're going to be starting from the front end. And also so that you'll not be having so much issues with back end, uh, front end developers. Because when you come to the industry, there's a lot of rift between the front end developers and the back end developers, acquisitions and counter acquisitions. You didn't do it well, you did it well, you're not following right. So it's better as a back end developer, you understand what the front end is expecting and what they will face by the time you build your back end, which is why we'll be starting with the back end. Sorry, with the front end. So to start with the front end, we are going to be building our front end with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is the core basic language for building a website. Uh, you can't use it to build a mobile app. Uh, there are other ways to build mobile apps, but it doesn't mean that I'm teaching you for only Websites. We want to learn front end the same way the front end will interact with our back end. That's exactly the same way the mobile app is going to interact with our back end. So, but we are going to be starting with the front end website. So, we're going to build a little thing on the website, build it, test it, see that it's working, and then we'll proceed. So, and also some persons discover that they prefer front end more. Some persons will also say, I like back end more. You are free. So, but I'm not doing that to uh, uh, change your option. I'm just doing it to make sure you understand what the front end will face. So, if you are going to be writing, Okay. Um, also, I would like to mention that within our classes, there might be time where I will be interrupted with network. So um, don't feel worried. I will always join back again. So if at any point you stop hearing from me, don't panic. If just network interrupting me, I will still come back again. So, um, that being said, I want to go straight to writing to learning front end now. And I'm sure you know why we're learning front end first before going into back end. So if you don't know why, please ask questions. If you know why, you can also drop a thumbs up so that I continue. Let's go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Anybody? Question, thumbs up, which one? All right, so let me continue then. So here I will just create this and I call it cohort one because everything here is for cohort one. So I'll create another one for cohort two. All right. So when you're about to start a backend project, the first thing you need to do is to create a folder, which is what I'm trying to do now. The first thing you need to do is to create a folder and you can name it anything. I'll call it introduction for me is introduction. Um, George, I want to know what you mean by don't know. Is it for me? And also, if you have a question, don't drop it on the general platform. I may not come to that part. I don't want to skip your question. We have a question and answer topic. It will always be open. You can't see my screen. Sorry, let me share that. Let me try again.
Okay, you should be able to see my screen now. Okay, um, nobody has asked the question, but we are going to be writing Node or JavaScript for our back end. And for the database, you're going to be using MongoDB, but they are basically the same things. Now, I've been writing Node for a few years, and I have come across a lot of persons come to me say they want to move their back end from Python to Node. Uh, some person say, you know what, I want to have my backend on Node. Some say Laravel, but bottom line, I'm not saying Node is better, but I have used Node and I'm still using Node and it works fine. Now, some person say Laravel is good, is very good, and I know it's good, but though I haven't, I haven't used Laravel, but I know it's good. I know people who do. And Python, yeah, I know people who use Python, but I think Node is better. Django, rather, I think Node is better. But all these programming languages, what I would say is it doesn't really matter what you use to code them or what you are using to code them because the users are not interested in knowing whether you're using JavaScript or you're using PHP or you're using Python. They are not interested in knowing that. What they want to know is, is it working or is it not working? So, but by the time you are done, you should be able to learn um, whatever you want to learn on your own. So, but this is what I will say. I would like you to learn JavaScript first because by the time you learn JavaScript first, it will be easier to learn any other programming language, even if you want to learn it on your own. Like I mean, if you learn JavaScript, you can learn Python on your own. But I don't see why you want to do that because, uh, well, um, wisdom. I want to understand your question. Do you mean the node? Is it going to be used to build a mobile app? and back end um the node is going to be used to build our back end now that back end a front end website can use it a mobile app can use it a dashboard can use it if you also have a desktop app it can also use it any software you want can also use the back end now but that depends on let me confirm that I'm also recording, George. Um, sometimes I do. Yes, I'm still recording. I'm still recording. Thank you. Um, so, but as a backend developer, you should know that your backend will be used by different or can be used by different platforms. So, bearing that in mind, when you are building your program, you should build it in that line except you they inform you that it will only be used by a mobile app or only be used by a website or maybe one or two depends so but let's leave back end first now we're not doing back end now we want to understand what the front end is how the front end developer thinks and what the front end is expecting from you as a back end developer because like i said a lot depends on you, the back-end developer. If a mobile app is not working, it is the back-end. If people cannot log in, it is the back-end. If people are not able to do transfer, it's from the back-end. So it is good that when you build a solid back-end, you don't want any front-end developer pointing fingers at you, saying, no, you didn't do it well. No, you understand what the front-end will do, how the front-end will handle everything, and you are building a back end that will suit that front end. So that is why we are doing front end first. So, but if you still have a question on back end, go ahead and ask it. But if you don't, please drop a thumbs up so that we continue with our front end. If you don't have a question, please drop a thumbs up so that I can continue. If you have a question, yeah, thank you. 
So like I said, the first thing you need to do to create a project or a front-end project is to build, um, create a folder first. I have my folder here, and this is called introduction. Now this folder, you consider it as your project directory, but to a layman, it is called a folder. But to you, a developer, it's called your project directory. So sometimes you can hear project directory or you can hear a folder. You should understand what I'm talking about. Now, the second thing is to um, explain to you the softwares or technologies we are going to be using. The first one is our text editor, and I will be using Visual Studio Code called VS Code. This one. Now, why do I prefer VS Code? One reason why I prefer it is because I build large projects, and VS Code allows me to organize everything easily for large projects. Now, but it doesn't mean you must use Visual Studio Code. You can use anyone you are familiar with, maybe Notepad++, Sublime Test, anyone. You can, but if you use Visual Studio Code, you follow up with exactly what I'm doing. So download it for your operating system. Click download and download VS Code. That's one. Next thing is Git. Yeah, I will need you to also download Git. Maybe not today. This one, maybe not today, but you need Git. So by the end of the class, please download Git to your system and install it. Maybe Windows, Mac, install it. But for VS Code, install VS Code today and now. It mustn't be VS Code. If you already have Sublime Text, it's fine. If you have Notepad++, it's fine. But you need a text editor today to be able to follow today's class. So for Git, you can leave Git maybe tomorrow or after the class you download git next thing is node you need node so i will i will do this uh, let me just search for node space yes you need node or node js download node maybe not today but you need node for the backend class so download node Maybe after today's class, download it. Okay. Now, that being said, let's proceed with our front end. So, the goal here, the goal is to open this folder with VS Code. So, if you are using Windows, it depends on how you installed your Visual Studio Code. You can right click on it. Uh, for me, I'm using Mac now. I switched, so I'm using Mac now. And I can't find the option. Now, the option I'm looking for is to open with VS Code. You should see it here. If you installed it that way, you open it. But if you don't find it, then go ahead and open VS Code. I uh, will close these ones. Go ahead and open VS Code now. If you are using Windows, you should see somewhere here options. The first one will be File. So you click on File and then select Open Folder and then search for this folder. Like I said, the goal is to open this folder with VS Code. But if you still can't do that, the easiest way is to drag this folder and drop it on VS Code. So drag the folder and drop it on VS Code and then it will open. So make sure that you are seeing the name of the folder at the top of your VS Code like this. So here I have introduction, here introduction. So make sure you are seeing the name of the folder here. So if you do that, we want to talk about the website. Now. When you want to build a website, building a website to a developer is more like building a house. 
you want to build a house, uh, the first thing you want to consider is the location where you will build the house. Do you want to build it in Port Harcourt? Do you want to build it in Lagos? Do you want to build it in Abuja? So where do you want to build your house? That's the first thing you need, the location. Now, to us developer, that location can be referred to as your domain name, your URL address, the domain name, where the house will be found. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is when you get a location in mind, say you want to build it in Abuja, the next thing you want to do is to get the land. You need land to build the house on. Now, the land, as a developer, will refer to the land as your hosting. You need hosting. It can be a cloud hosting. It can be a shared hosting. It can be a WordPress hosting, different type of hosting, but you need hosting. So the hosting, we can refer to it as a land that you get to build your house. Now, if you are building the house, you got it address you get the dom uh, the hosting you can keep that aside the next thing you want to do is on your land you want to lay foundations and start laying bricks so do your foundation start laying your bricks and then roof it all of that the basic structure that we can refer to it as html html uh, the HTML is referred to as the basic structure, the simple bricks. And if you do that, the house will not be fine. Of course, it will not be fine, it, but it will look like what you want. You get the shape, you get the structure of what you want. So whenever you are writing HTML, the goal is not to make it fine. The goal is to get the structure, how it should be the structure of how the house should be. So that is if you are writing HTML. Now, when you are done laying bricks and roofing it, the next step will be to do the plastering and then painting, painting, decorations, and all of that. So that part, you can refer to it as CSS. Uh, sorry, I'm not telling you the meaning of these acronyms. Um, it's not because I don't want you to know them. I, it's it, HTML is referred to hypertext markup language, hyper and the text and the markup and the language put together. So that's for HTML. The second part is the CSS cascading style sheet, the cascading and the style and the sheet cascading style sheet. So the plastering, the painting, the decoration put together, you can refer to them as the CSS. And at that point, your house will start being, of course, your house will be beautiful. Your house will look fine because you've added the painting, you've done your decorations, so your house will be fine. Now, but it's not complete. You need electricity, you need dust cooker, you need fridge, you need light, you need all the functionalities, you need fan. So, the remaining part is to add the functionalities, things that will add functions to your house. The ones I just mentioned now are just a few examples. So that part, to all developers, we can refer to it as JavaScript. So the basic first is your HTML. The next thing is your CSS. Then the final thing is your JavaScript. So by the time you're done with JavaScript, your whole house is complete. So that is why I always say that um, building a website is more like building a house to a web developer. So that being said, I want to believe by now you've been able to download your text editor and you've been able to open your folder using that text editor. So let's come back to VS Code. Now, this is VS Code. This is the one I will be using. Forget about every other thing here. Now, VS Code can do a lot of things. Forget about all those things for now. Focus on only the ones I will show you. 
only the ones I will show you. Now, there's going to be a lot I will show you later, but for today, just focus on the ones I will show you. The first thing is to open this VS Code and then find this folder. Open this folder. Now, here on this VS Code, you have this panel here. Sorry. Uh, please don't drop your question. Ah, I missed an assignment. Don't drop your question in the wrong group. I may not be able to open it. Let me keep it like this so I don't get confused. All right. So here is your file explorer, meaning at any point where you can't find this panel, you click on it and it will open and close. So here you open this. If you see this like this, it means you need to click here so that this part, this panel will open up like this. So that's for that. Now here you have the name of your folder or your file directory, project directory. This is the name. You will see it here. I think, I don't know if this is big enough. If it's not, you let me know. I don't know if the font size is okay. So here, this first icon here is to create a new file. The first icon here is to create a new file. If you click on it, it will ask you to enter the name of the new file. The second icon here is to create a new folder or is used to create a new folder. So if you click on it, it will ask you to enter the name of the folder. So here is for a file, here is for a folder. So the two of them are very important. And also you can right click anywhere on this panel to either create a file or create a folder, anyone. So that being said, I will create a file. To create a file is to click here, and then I will call it index.html. Now, you don't have to call your own index.html. You can name it anything, but it has to end with .html. So whatever you choose to call that file is up to you, but it must end with .html. The reason is, while you are writing your codes, the browser will be responsible for interpreting your codes. So if it sees this extension .html, it will know that the codes inside are all HTML codes. So that is why it must be .html because the codes that you write in this file are all HTML codes. So I will hit enter. Now I have a file created here. And I have it here. So this part here is where you need to write all your codes. Here is where you have all your codes, while here you'll be having your files. Let me create a few more files. .html, create another one like something. .html, I'll create another one. Sorry, I didn't name this very well. So, so here on this part will contain all your files in this folder, all of them in this folder like this. So on this part is where you write your codes in each of these folder or maybe each of these files, sorry. So I'll close this, I'll close this and I will delete these ones. I'll delete this one. So like I said, it mustn't be called index.html, but whatever you call it, make sure it's ending with .html. So I'll click on it and then I'm back here. So when you want to write HTML codes, uh, if you have a question, please drop your question and I will attend to it. Sorry, let me just decide if that's okay. 
If you have a question at any time, please drop your question and I will attend to it. All right, now when you want to write HTML, HTML is divided into two parts. So you start with something, let's say HTML and you close it. Now, of course you see that this is HTML and it has two parts. Let me know, I want to know if this font size is okay with you. If this font size is okay, let me know so I can continue. Can you see my screen and if the font size is okay? Can you see my screen and if the font size is okay? Nobody is saying anything. Can you hear me? Sorry, maybe some persons have dropped it in the general group. Okay, okay. On the general right. okay i've increased it a little all right so like i said html is divided into two parts the head the opening tag and the closing tag now more matter of fact most of the html tags and somebody be asking what is a html tags if you want to write anything on the browser anything that would display on the browser you need a tag so html is all about using tags to display things on the browser if you want to display text you must use a tag if you want to display images, you must use tags. If you want to display videos, you must use tags. So it is not allowed to just write simple text. No, you are not allowed to write simple text. Whatever text you are writing must be within a tag. Some persons call it tag, others call it element. They are all the same thing. Tags and element, they are the same thing. So if you hear tags, HTML tags, HTML elements, they're all the same thing. So I was explaining again. Now, this is a HTML tag. Because the name here says HTML. And this is opening tag. Yeah, your stu Visual Studio code is fine. It's just that you have not opened a folder. Go ahead and click here, open a folder, and continue. So this is the opening tag, and this is the closing tag. How do I know that? Because of this forward slash here. This slash here will tell you which one is the front, um, the opening tag and which one is the closing tag. So only the closing tags will have a forward or will carry a forward slash. Only the closing tag. So this one here is not carrying a forward slash, so it is not a closing tag. Brother, it is an opening tag. That is it. The next thing I will go with the HTML head. Like I said, the HTML is divided into two parts, the head and the body. The head of the HTML and the body of the HTML. So if you look at it now, you see that the head has two tags, the opening tag and the closing tag. The body also has two tags, the opening tag and the closing tag. And like I said, the closing tag is the part of it where you find the forward slash. So here there's a forward slash. So let me just indent this. So the opening, the HTML start from here, to here, here you have the body and the head. So I'll break this and I'll also break this. So I'll give spaces between them. Now I want to explain what the head tag is and what the body tag is. Now the head tag contains instructions for the browser. If you want to give the browser 
any instruction what the browser needs to know before it starts reading your HTML codes, you will put that instruction in the head of the HTML here. Whether it's SEO, whether it's the viewport, whether it's the screen size, whatever instructions you want the browser to know, you put that instruction in the head of the HTML. Then the body here will contain all your codes. Whatever codes you want to write will be contained in the body of the HTML. So I, will, I know that is clear and you got that clear. Please drop whatever question during classes, whatever you want to say, just say it on the question and answer topic so that I don't have to be going. I know when the question has been dropped and so on. So this is the head, this is the body, and you know what the head is used for. You also know what the body is used for. When you start writing your codes, you are not allowed to write anything on top of the body or below the body. No. Whatever code you are writing must be within the body. If you need space, open more space on the body. So, but make sure that all your codes are within the body tags, not outside of the body tags. All your codes must be within the body tag. If you need space, just click enter, 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 and make more space if you need space. So that being said, for the head, all your instructions, your instructions are not allowed outside of the head. No, your instructions must be within the head tag like this. So whatever you write outside of the head tag, you are on your own. If they ask you who taught you, please don't mention my name. Thank you. So do you have any question on the HTML? and the parts of the html any question on the html and the parts of the html drop your questions now if you don't have a question drop a thumbs up so that we can continue if you have a question okay thank you no question thank you thank you no question Sorry, I might be a bit low. I like it that way because um, it will be better that you can write something at least. Now, I have taught students, some of my students, the, some of them are not in Nigeria currently. They are away. Some I know, some I don't know, but a few of them that I know they finished their master's abroad because I know two of them in Canada and they are asking me to teach them again. But the problem there is I may not be able to teach them again. Uh, when you have the opportunity to learn, learn it now and better because you don't know where you will be. You will get the opportunity to work, but you have idea of how it should be done, but you cannot do it. That's one thing with coding. If you know Sabi, you know Sabi. You can ha just have idea. There are, there are a lot of persons that know how to build a website, but if you give them the project, they cannot build it. They can't. A lot of persons will take up website projects, but they will cut the money and then look for a real developer that will build the website. So please, whatever I'm doing, make sure you understand it and you can do it. And that is why I will always pause to ask questions. Yes. So like I said, um, I'm using VS Code. One beautiful thing why I like using VS Code is because I don't have to cram anything. And I don't have need to type the whole thing. The full complete thing, I don't need to type it. If you want to start HTML project, 
you already know that html is divided into two parts the head and the body you know that already you also know that the head contains the instruction for the browser you know that and you also know that the body is where you write your code you know that so to bootstrap html project or to start a new html project i just need to type a short code exclamation mark and then hit tab so exclamation tab will bring out the whole thing here let me close this part so that it's more visible so here we have our html and we have the head and we also have the body and i can indent this a little so you see how it looks like so here you are seeing the HTML opening tag. The only difference now is that it is specifying that the language should be English. And you have the head here, which will contain instructions for the browser. The first instruction here is saying the title of this website should be called document. You can change the title if you want. Here, the second one is saying, use this character set, UTF-8, for this website. So this is another instruction. Now, the final instruction is saying, name a viewport. When you name it, use the width of the device to be the initial scale of 1.0. So this is just like a follow -com instruction, a follow -com. You are going to be adding your own instruction if you need to add your own instruction. But if you don't, if you don't see the need, you leave it like that. So, but how did I get here? Exclamation mark, enter. That's all. So I don't need to type everything myself. Now, and I will say this, if you are using VS code, and you see yourself typing out everything the whole letters there something is wrong you are doing something wrong with vs code we have something called emit now see where i want to type i'm typing in the body not outside of the body you should be doing everything within the body tag so html uh, vs code has something called emit Emit is a plugin installed inside H uh, VS Code and is a follow com. So this plugin will give you the auto suggestions. So the exclamation mark is from Emit. The exclamation mark is from Emit. Now if you look at it here, it says Emit abbreviation. So that's one uh, reason why I like using VS Code. VS Code will be giving me auto suggestions so if I'm working on a really large project, I will be very fast. So that is why I love VS Code. Now, I'm not saying others don't have Emit. You need to install Emit manually on Sublime Text. Now, I don't know if uh, Notepad uses Emit, but I don't even want to find out. So here we have the head, we have the body. Now we can start writing our codes. Like I said before, to do anything in HTML, you need a tag. If you want to write a text, you need a tag. If you want to use an image, you need an image tag. If you want to put video or audios, you need audio and video tags. Nothing should be typed like that ordinarily. You need a tag. So let's start with text. Now, this thing I'm doing here, is a different color and it is green this is considered to be a comment the browser will not see this this is only for human beings so browser will not read this is a comment now i can do the same thing here if i comment this out now comment means control forward slash or command forward slash so now I have commented it out. The browser will not see it. So now it is no longer a code, but it is a comment. Control forward slash, I will bring it back again. Now it is a code. The browser 
will see it. So I want to get that class. So the first thing I want to talk about is test. Test, maybe heading tags, headings, anyone, text or headings. So if you want to write a title, a heading, I will take this here, heading, anything, there are different heading tags. The heading tags range from H1 to H6. So if you want to write the title, you want to write topic, you want to write subheading, you want to write the heading, anything at all, you have between H1 to H2 to choose any one you want to use. I will type H and you see, I don't need to type everything. Emit is already suggested. So I will say again, the moment you start typing everything yourself, what I mean is I want to use H1 and I type H1 and I close it, I put on this, I put like this, then you are doing something wrong. So all you need to do with Emit, you just type H and you pick the heading you want to use. So I'll use heading one and I'll write topic one. I'll come again, use heading two and I'll write topic two. I'll come now notice that everything is within the body tag. Nothing is going outside. Even if you are writing 1000 line of codes, they must all be within the body tag. Thank you. So I'll go again with H3 and I'll write topic three. And then I'll go with H4 and I'll write topic four. And then H5 and I'll write topic five. Sorry. And then H6 and I'll write topic six. So I have six of the heading tags here. These are used for headings. And that is why they are called the heading tags. So whether you want headings, topics, subheading, any of those things, you use a heading tag. And how will you see this? The first way to see it on the browser is to go back to that folder or that project directory, click on it, you will see the name of the file you created. Now the name of my file here is index.html. So the name of this file is index.html. If you click on it to open it, the browser will open. Now you see those heading tags on my browser. So what I'll do is I'll keep this one here, uh, minimize it a little to this point, and then take this one back here, and then bring this here, and then maybe reduce this side. You know what, let me switch. I'll switch this to this side, switch this to this side. Here, now keep this here. All right, so the heading tag ranges from H1 to H6. And here you can see the difference between the two of them, not the two of them, the difference between all of them. The H1 is bigger or the biggest, while H6 is the smallest. So these are used for heading tag. You can change the headings if you want, and you can say, welcome to Nigeria. That is your heading. It's fine. Now, the difference here is I have saved this. It will not reflect on the browser unless you save it on the VS Code. So saving, you use Control S or Command S to save it on your VS Code. So if I make a change here, you see that there's a circle here. So whenever you see a circle here, it means that this file has not been saved. So the changes will not reflect on the browser because there is a circle here. But the moment I do Command S or Control S, you see that that circle is gone. So that means that this
sorry, I am back. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, like I said before, it normal. What happened was that my router went off. Yeah. So, but I'm back now. I'm back now. I will share my screen again. Make sure you can see it. All right. She. So we can continue from where I was stuck. Now I was trying to explain the difference between the H1 tags and also how to know when it is saved and when you haven't saved your file. And I think I've covered the part where it has been saved. But the changes which I just made, these changes, is not reflecting on the browser. The reason why it's not reflecting on the browser is because we opened it from here. Now, later in the course of our class, we're going to be using uh, a server to run it. So that server doesn't sleep. Anytime you make a change, it will update it. Anytime it makes a change, it will update it. But for now, whenever you make a change, you just refresh your browser and you will see that changes. So if I say, welcome to Youth Drive and save it, the changes will not appear automatically because we're not using a server yet. So what you need to do is refresh the browser and you will see that change. So you can also make more changes. Hello, access bank and save it and then refresh have that change. So any question? Sorry, any question? And I want to believe you can hear me and you can also see my screen. So any question? No question? All right. Okay, sorry, so people will post it in the general group. All right, no question. So basically we've been able to create a project directly who's a folder. You've been able to create one file, which is the index.html file. You can call it anything, but it needs to end with .html. The second thing is you've seen how to start the HTML, like bootstrap it with exclamation mark, and you've seen how to write your first tag. Now, for newbies, for people who are learning uh, coding for the first time, their first tags is usually hello world. But it's a good thing your own is welcome to Nigeria. So welcome to Nigeria and welcome to you tribe. So the next thing I want to do is to introduce you to HTML tags. This is the first one. Now let's continue. The second one is the paragraph tag. Say you want to write a long text, a long text. You'll be using a paragraph tag. That is a P tag. Is the P tag. And this is the only P tag. There is no other P tag. Now notice that everything I'm writing, my paragraph is within the P tag. If I save it and come back to my browser and refresh, you see that I have a long paragraph. It doesn't matter if I break them here, they will all appear in one line provided it is still within the paragraph tag. So I have a paragraph. So this is the only paragraph tag. There is no other paragraph tag like that. So this is for paragraph. The next thing is the button tag, B-U-T, button. 
So this is a button. If I click on it, and I write submit and save. Now, if I come here and refresh, I have a button here. So this is a button. I can click on it. It's clickable button. I can change it to submit now and save it. If I refresh this, I have submit now. So now some persons will be asking, how do you know which one is the tag? Where will you see the tag? How do you remember the tags? Like I said, you don't need to cram anything. The documentation I will introduce you to is called W3 Schools. This one here. Now, if you want to find it, if you want to find anything, anything, just type your question. For example, HTML tags. Sorry. HTML tags. And you see that I'm attaching the name W3 schools to this my search, meaning that the information I'm looking for, I want it to come from W3 schools. So whatever you want to search for and you attach W3 schools to it, it will pop up uh, information or suggestions from W3 schools. So here I have a reference opened already and I will share this link with you on the platform here. So you can have access to it here. Now this contains a list of tags that you will be using in your HTML. Now you may not use all of them because I haven't used all of them, but if at any point you don't remember anyone or what it is used for, you can always come back here to check what the tag is and what it is used for. So that is why I'm sharing that with you. So all the tags I will be using, all of them are here. You'll find all those tags here. So that being said, I can minimize this now and continue. So I have introduced you to heading tag and the paragraph tag and the button tag. So let me use it in a way that they make sense to me, at least. So here now, I'm going to create just a simple thing like, uh, let's see, H1. And I'll call this, uh, what will I call it? Welcome to front end, front end development. So that is my title and I'll save this here. Welcome to front end development. So I'll put a paragraph, my P tag. Now I am free to write whatever paragraph I want to write but I don't want to write paragraph myself. So what I will do is Emmet will suggest for me. So if I use the keyword, for example, now I can go to my browser, for example, here, and I go to, is it Ninja Loaded? Ninja Loaded. And open this one. Um, and then click on this one. And I can copy the paragraph here if I want. Copy it and then paste it here if I want. And save it. If I come back to my browser and refresh, I have that paragraph there. So this is a paragraph. So I have a heading, H1, and I have a paragraph here now. So the next thing I can do is to add a button, a button that will say read more. And save it. So if I refresh this, I have a button that says read more. So you see my title, you see my paragraph, and you see the button to click and read more. 
So the next thing now would be, how do I add an image to it? How do I add an image? Now we're going to add an image later. Uh, I will do that later. But let me create this again one more time. So I have these ones. I'll come down here and create another one. So I'll start with the heading. This time, let me use H2. And I'll call it uh, celebrity lifestyle, celebrity lifestyle, whatever you want to call it is your choice. Celebrity lifestyle, I've done that and I'll save it. Now I have my title. What did I write? Sorry, it doesn't matter. So I'll write a paragraph here. Now I can go back to here and copy a paragraph anything just copy this paragraph come back here paste it in between this and save it if i come back here I refresh i have my paragraph and i can add a button to it now with but button and i'll say read more and save it if i refresh this now i have two blog posts with title, paragraph, and a read more button. Now, this is how you add text to a browser or to the browser. This is how you add text to the browser. But when you are writing HTML, the most important thing is not to get something displayed on the browser. So, for example, I can come down here at the bottom and I will just write random thing and I will save it. If I refresh my browser, you see that that thing is appearing there. What I just wrote now is appearing on the bottom. But is this right? Drop your, drop your answer. Doing this, is it right? This thing I just did here now, is it right? Anybody? Anybody? Yes. No, it is not right. Good. Now, when you are writing HTML, make sure that all you are writing is within the body tag. That is number one. Then number two is the main purpose of writing HTML is not just to display something. Now, it is actually displayed on the browser, but that's not the main purpose. The main purpose is to get the structure. Imagine if you paid an architect to, or maybe paid an engineer to build a house for you. And they are building the house, they are laying bricks and laying bricks, and you come to look at the house. And you say, this structure is not what I want. But they tell you, you see bricks now, we're laying bricks. Is it not bricks you want to lay? No, 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 no. My goal is not just to lay bricks. My goal is to get the structure and the design. That is the most important thing when you are writing HTML. Now, a lot of you will be working in a company, in a group of persons. You may be working as a freelancer. That is also fine. But if you are working with companies, with, with the other developers, they will be reviewing your code. So one of the things I'll be doing is to review your code. I'll give you an assignment, you write the code, and I will review your code. So your code should follow a particular structure. You structure your code very well. Meaning that if you look at the way I wrote these things, you see that I had to put a title, I put a paragraph, and a button at the end. Then that is one group. Below it, I have another one. Nothing stops me from coming here, uh, bringing this H2, bring it from here, and then put it beside or under this one, save it and refresh it. Nothing will stop me, but then the structure is no longer fine again, but it's actually displaying on the browser. So for some person, this will be considered as a subheading to this one. It's possible if you want, but this one now doesn't have a title again. Now, you need to understand how to group 
elements or tags when it comes to HTML. Just writing it is not enough, but you should be able to group it like that. So what I'll do is I'll remove these ones, all of them, and then start grouping before writing the tags. I'll group before writing the tags. So the first thing I want to do is to create a section. Now, a section, let me show you what I mean by sections. Using, okay, I've removed that. Let me open Jumia, jumia.com. So what is a section? Now, if you look at this website, from here to here is one part. We can consider that as a section. From here to here is a section. From here to here is another section. From here to here is a different section. Now. From here down to this part. Now, you can actually add this to it, but it's a different section. If you look at, okay, um, the way it's designed, okay, that's not a section. So what they did is from here to here is a different section. And then from here down to this part is a different section. From here to this part, part is a different section and from here down to here is a different section so your website will have different different section you should be able to group your website and also when you group them by section there will be bigger sections and there will be smaller sections for example let's take this part from here to here horizontally is a different section like this all of this but inside this section this part is a smaller section this part is a smaller section this part is a smaller section and this part also is a smaller section but they are all inside one bigger section so that is what you need to achieve whenever you are writing HTML codes, the structure is very, very important, not just to display it on the browser, but the structure is very important. So what I will do is this. Before I write anything, I will first define the first structure, which is the head. This is called a nav here. This nav, if I come back to my, uh, what would I call it? Um, yeah. The nav is this part from the head here to the end. Everything on this navigation here is the nav. But sometimes you can add the whole of this to it. Some people can call it the whole header. It depends. Different developers, different approach. And I must say this. When it comes to coding, whatever you are doing or whatever you will do, there are three different ways of doing every particular thing when it comes to coding. So how you choose to do it may not be exactly how another person would do it, but it does not mean that what you are doing is wrong. No, so long as you are following the right principles and you are getting it very well, your will is fine. So being a developer, I have the experience to tell you that for every single thing, when it comes to coding, there are three different ways of doing it. Maybe there is more, but I'm certain of three. There are three different ways of doing anything. So when you choose to do it one way, and you see another person doing it another way, it doesn't mean they are wrong. They're doing fine. So here is my nav. This navigation will contain all the links at the head of the browser. So I will leave that part. So what I'll do, I'll say put request, um, links or call it navigation links. Now, the next thing is creating a section. I'll create a section. So this is my section. Now, this is my first section. You can have so many 
sections if you want. But I have one section. Notice that everything is within the body tag. None is going outside of the body tag, still within. So, but in this section, I will have a smaller section with a div. Some person will be asking, what is a div? A div is just, um, it does the same thing as section. It is used in grouping. When you want to group the same thing or the same uh, uh, thing that have the same relationship, you, you use a div. So here I would then do something like add my H1 and I say, this is my topic. And then here I'll put a paragraph and I'll say Lorem like this. And then I'll put a button here, a button and I'll say read more and save it. Now, if I refresh my browser, you see that I'm only seeing the topic, the paragraph and the button, but I'm not seeing the noun. I'm not seeing the section and I'm not seeing the div. This is how your code should be grouped. By this, I've gotten the structure. If I want to do something else, I will come down here and create another section. So now this section, whatever is here, is independent of what will be in here. That is structure. So displaying something on the browser is not the main goal when you are writing HTML. The main goal should be getting a good structure. So now I will come down here, still inside the same section, I will create another div, I will use H1, and I'll call it uh, Celebrity Lifestyle. If you have any question, please drop your question and I will attend to it. But if no question, I will continue. Then the next thing is to put a paragraph and then write my paragraph. And then I'll put my button and then say read extra more. And whatever, save it, come to the browser and refresh. So the same thing we did before, we are still doing it now, achieving the same result, but now it has a better structure. Why do I say that it has a better structure? So I will remove this. You see that we have the body tag. Inside the body tag, there is section number one. Inside section number one, it has two groups, this one and this one. Now, inside each of those groups, you've grouped the tags together. So this one represents one blog post. This one represents another blog post. The reason why you should get your structure right is so that when you come to applying CSS and JavaScript, there will be no challenge, there will be no issue. It will be very, very easy. So whatever you think should be together, you group them. Whatever does not belong to that group, you remove them. So that is how to get a good structure. And I can go further to do more and more. But with this, I'm sure I've explained what the structure is like this. So do you have any question on this? Any question on this? Any question on this? Any question, no question. If there is no question, please drop a thumbs up so that we can continue. If there is no question, drop a thumbs up so that, is Victoria still in this class? Yeah, good thing I know your name now because you are found it difficult. Who else? Wisdom. Any question? Wisdom. Okay. No question from wisdom. Uh, Victoria, any question? She's not on, oh yeah, she's on the call. No question. So let's proceed. We have been able to cover, we've been able to cover 
tags. All right, where is Victoria? Okay, Vic Victoria, George, and Ahmed. So who will Victoria go first? Uh, where is she? Please, do you want the mic? Go ahead, ask your question. Victoria, we are listening to you, or do you prefer to type? Yes, I've answered this video. We are going to share the recording for today's class. I will share that to you, but it needs to be edited first before shared. So that means you, not be get, you may not be getting it today, but you will get the recording of the class. So Victoria is not saying anything. George, you are saying Good evening, how did sir. I yeah, go ahead? Good evening. And um, please, for the how do you add more content? When someone should if someone should click on the read more button, I think some other content should display. So how do you add those contents? Okay. Um, thank you for your question. We are going to add more content. We're just starting with the first page, the first step. Display this first step. Now, if they click read more, there will be more content. We'll add more content later. But let's get the first step. And George, I'm trying to find where you say numbers. I don't see any numbers on my screen. Numbers, where do you see numbers? George, uh, where is he? Do you want the mic? Um, where is George? Yes, go ahead. Where do you see numbers? Hello, George, are you there? Hello, George, can you hear me? Please unmute yourself, unmute yourself, and go ahead. Or okay. do you want to type? Yes, okay. go ahead, go ahead. I can okay. hear you. Uh, I can see the numbers uh, by the left side, uh, but that's one. These numbers? The yes, from one to oh. whatever. Okay, I'm not the one that added this number. This is... If you create a file, let me go ahead and create a file. I'll create a file. I'll call it anything dot HTML. Hit enter. Now you see by default it creates numbers. Now if I keep entering, it will be creating numbers. So what it is doing is it is counting the lines of codes that I've written or the lines of code I have used. So here I've used the uh, 37 lines. Sometimes it gets to 1,000, 3,000 lines, 4,000 lines, and so on and so forth. So I'm not the one adding it, but VS Code is counting the number of codes I've written or the number of lines I've used. So I didn't okay. add that. Okay. Uh, one other thing, uh, uh, there are some uh, keys that you're using, like the paragraph and some other stuff. So I've forgotten them. How do we know how to input those stuff in the code that we are writing? As in like uh, the space, and there are some other things you mentioned. Okay. The okay. and so on. How do we okay. know how to? First, first, I have to share to you uh, this reference. Now, this reference contains all the HTML tags you will ever need. For example, let me find the P tag. It contains all the reference, all the P, where is the P, where is the P, M, N, E, O, P. Are you serious? Uh, the P tag is somewhere here. Yeah, here. It defines a paragraph. Now, even if you don't know what tag to use, just type it on Google. 
depending on what you want to do, let's say tag to add a paragraph in HTML. It enter is going to now. If you add W3 schools, it will take you straight to W3 schools. But if it doesn't, you'll see a lot of options, so many suggestions how to add paragraph. That's on one part. Now, the third part is the reason for this class is to show you what to do. So I will do it, you will see it then it will be your turn to do it. Now, if you are following my class, if I ask you uh, to type uh, a heading, any heading or any topic, you choose between H1 to H6 because you have seen me do it. If I ask you to type a paragraph, you know that you'll be using a paragraph tag. If I say put a readme button, you are going to use this button because you have seen me do it. So that is why we are having this live section. So the issue of how do you know when, how do you know when, no, 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 no. Just pay attention to the class. What you need to know is what I will do. When I do it, then you will know it. But if you are not paying attention, if I do it, you will not know it. So for now, I've shown you what a section tag is. I've shown you what the div tag is. I've shown you H1 to H6. I've shown you a paragraph tag. And I've also shown you a button tag. You should be able to know those ones. So, and I think those should answer your question. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's continue. Where did we stop? We stopped here. Yeah. So now I've been able to add this tag. The next thing I want to do is to talk about listing. Say you want to create a list, maybe a list of items, a list of properties, a list of clothes, whatever list you want to create. List in HTML. Lists. So in HTML, there are two types of lists. The first list is called the ordered list. Now, I want to believe you know what this is. This is a comment, and it is not considered as a code. It's a comment, and is in green. So an ordered list is a list that is ordered, of course, from the name, ordered. It has an order. It follows a certain pattern. It has an arrangement, meaning... It starts from number one to where you end. It has, it follows that order. So how do you create an ordered list? An ordered list is created with OL. OL stands for ordered list. So ordered list will come with opening and closing tag. But if I save this and refresh it, you see that there is no list on the browser. That's because we've not added the individual list item. We have created the parent list, but we have not added the individual list items. So I will enter the first list item with li. Li is a list item, and I will call this David. I will enter the next list item, and I will call it George. I will enter the next list item and I'll call it, uh, what's another name here? Hamed. So if I save this and refresh my browser, now you see I have a list and it is an ordered list because number one, we always remain number one. Number two, we always remain number two. So you know which one is what number. So this is an ordered list. Uh, I want to be 
believe you can see hear me okay I don't know what's going on, but it, yeah, unordered list. Now, unordered list is the second type of list in HTML. This list you create it with UL, unordered list. So if I open this and save it, come to my browser and refresh, you see that I don't see any list, just the ordered list. That is because we've not added the individual list items. So here I will start with Victoria and next list item, Samson. This doesn't have to be for names. It can be for food items like Maggie. It can be for cars like uh, BMW, anyone, whatever list items you want to create. So I will save this and refresh my browser. Now I have an unordered list. Here you don't know which one, and you don't know which one is number two. Okay, so, so these are the two type of lists we have, have in HTML. Any question on, on lists? Any question on lists? Okay. If there is no question, please drop it. Any question, please drop uh, anybody the mic. Yeah, yeah. Um, who do I give the mic to know that you can hear me? Okay, 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 you can hear me. All right, sorry. So, Victoria, go ahead. Yes, Tunde, that's what we normally see. The network sometimes can be crazy well it doesn't deter us you have to do it so victoria go ahead do you need the mic you are here go ahead ask your question we have two types of lists and we've created them barker do you want to say something go ahead is there sorry sir please does it mean yeah, that you can ahead. use okay does it mean that you can use any any type if you want to you can choose to use either the um unordered or the ordered listing ah uh, network hello 
Yes, you can. Now, depending on what you want to build, if you want to build a list that will have numbering. Okay, I can hear you, but you can't hear me. So who's brought that? Um, I think it's mine. Uh, okay. If you want to build a list that needs numbering, if you want to build a list that needs numbering, then you should be going with other lists. But if it doesn't need numbering, then you can go with an ordered list. But also, you can also remove the numbering here. If you don't want it, you can also remove the numbering here. And also, you can remove this bullet. This bullet, if you don't want it, you can also remove the bullet. So depending on how you want your design to look like, you choose the list you want to go with like that. So any question then? So that we move to the next thing and possibly, yes, I haven't added images. Now we're going over to images in a matter of seconds. So, but let's confirm that there is no more question on the lists. Any question? If there is no question, please drop a thumbs up so that we can continue. My network is crazy. I don't know. Anybody dropping? Uh, if you can still hear me, yeah, this is just saying connected, but I think I'm still live. But my telegram has been connected, so how will it be as possible? Okay, I am just going to it. No wisdom, we are not covering everything on front end. We will go with the basics. We start with more, more. Our time will be up by six o'clock, so we have thirty minutes. So we are not covering any everything on front end. No, we are not. We just start with the basic HTML, and then by six o'clock we'll be done. But if you want us to end here. I can actually end the class here. Tomorrow we continue. Is that fine? Should we end the class here and then continue tomorrow? Or should we learn how to add images and then end the class? Okay. Karim says no. Okay. Yeah. Easy. We have not even started coding. And you already have a lot to digest. By the time we start coding, are you sure you'll be able to eat with us, let alone digest it with us? But it's fine, it's fine. It's, there's nothing much when it comes to when it comes to HTML. HTML is very, very easy. Now these things you don't need to cram them. You don't need to cram them at all. You can always find. I will keep doing it until you master it and then we'll move over to something else. Now let's talk about adding images before we end class. Images. When you want to add an image, there is something called an image tag and it's written as IMG. IMG is the image tag. So IMG comes with attributes these things here are called attributes i'll remove it now you see that the image does not have opening and closing tag also i did not type it myself i had to allow emit to suggest suggest so always allow emit to suggest that is the beauty of using vs code so here I will click on this. Now it comes with these things. These things are called attributes. What are attributes? For example, let's say somebody uh, 
you are not around your house. You are not around. And then somebody came to look for you, but they didn't find you. So your neighbor is trying to explain to you that somebody came to look for you. So you start asking for the attributes so that you actually know the person that came to look for you. Or maybe you work for the police and somebody's trying to give a statement in the police station. You ask for attributes. Can you describe this person? Can you describe like that? So attributes are the qualities of things that you will know them by. For example, a dog has four legs. That's the attribute. If somebody come and say, I saw a dog with two legs, you know that's not a dog. That is not a dog. A dog does not have four legs. So if somebody writes something like this as an image tag, you know, no, 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 no. This is not an image tag. An image tag will have attributes. Attributes. What's the first attribute? It will have something called SROC, the source. SROC is the source, meaning this image you want to add. Where is the image? Is the image on the cloud? Is it on Google? Is it on your project directory? Is it on that? So the, Im the, the image should have a source. This is the SROC where the image should come from. So that is one attribute of the image tag, the source, the source of the image that you want to display. The second one is called the alternative text. Now, let's say you are trying to add an image, but for some reasons, this image did not appear on the browser. What would be the alternative text that people should see, that users will see? Since they cannot see the image, what else would they see? Or let's say they are using an outdated browser. The browser they are using does not support the image you are trying to display. What is the alternative text they should see? So here you can call this a company logo. So this is an alternative text, meaning that if I go to my browser, because I am not adding the source of this image, the image will not display. But I added alternative text, meaning they should see a text. And if I come here and refresh, now you see that the image is not displayed, but an, a text is here saying this is a company logo. So that is, these are the two attributes of an image tag. So if someone writes an image tag like this, without these, or without one of these, you know that something is wrong. The image needs the source, where the image is coming from, and it also needs the auth, the alternative text, in case the image does not load, which text should people see? So what I would do is, this is one. Now you understand that. How do you then add the image? So there are two ways of adding images. One is if the image is already online. Online means if it's on Google, if it's on the cloud, if it's anywhere at all, online. Two, if you have downloaded the image, so you need to download the image, create a folder here for images. So this is where you store all your images. So these are the two ways of adding images. So you can add an image that is already online, already in use, or images that you uploaded to the cloud or some other developer uploaded to the cloud. Or you need to download the image, put it in your images folder, and then you display from there. So let's start with the first one. The first one are for images already on the cloud. Like these images are already online. All of these images, they are there already. So what I can do, is right click on the image to maybe open the image. You know what? Let me just go to this one. Yeah. Yeah. This image. I want to use this image. I'll right click on it and copy the image link or image address. That's what you need. So for images that are already online, you need the image 
link. Now, because I'm using Safari, it's calling it image address. But if you're using Edge or Chrome or any other browser, it will call it image link. So you copy the image link, come to your source, and paste it inside the source and save it. So if you come back to your website and refresh, I have my image here. So this is one way of adding an image. Images that are already in use. So you can find another image. Let's, let's find another one. So I will find this, uh, which one we cut my fan, Tinibu. Tinibu cut my fancy. So let's add our president. And I will right click on this image and copy the image address. So here I will then create an image tag, IMG. So inside the source, you see that this source has opening and closing quotes. It has opening and closing quote. That is where you paste it, not outside of the quote, not before the quote, but inside the quote. That's why you paste whatever you want to paste. I'll paste it inside the quote, not outside the quote. I'll save it, come back to my browser, I refresh, and now I have syllable here. So, so this is the first way of adding an image. Any question on how to add images with the image link? If there is no question, drop a thumbs up so I do the last one. And also, if you have not ticked your attendance, please, I have a topic here called class attendance. Drop a thumbs up there once. Drop a thumbs up for attendance because it's going to be 6 p.m. in a few minutes and that will be the end of the attendance. Attendance are taken from 3 to 6. Any attendance before 3 will not be taken. Any attendance after 6 will not be taken. All right, so the last way of adding an image, the last the last way, uh, we're going to find another. Now, this is not because I am on Ninja Loaded. You can do this on any website at all. Let me go to Google and then find uh, what image am I looking for? BMW. Looking for BMW. And I'll go to images. Which one do I like? Do I really like BMW? No, I don't. Yes, I do. I think I do, but I don't know. How do you save? Do you mean how you save the images or how you save your file? If it is to save your file, Control S or Command S. That's how you save your file. But I want to know, is it to save your file or to save images? So you look for the image you want. You click on the image you want. You download the image you want. So what I want to do is save this image. Where is save? Uh, yeah, save the image. So you download the image. I'll click to download. And I'm going to save it as a BMW. Let me just call it BMW. And I'm saving it to my desktop and I'll save it. Yeah, to save your file, you use Control S. So if I make a change, Control S or Command S, that should save your file. Control S or Command S. So I have my image somewhere on my desktop. So here, this is my, sorry, where is it? This is my image. Yeah, this is the image I want to use. I've downloaded it. No, no, no. If you copy the link of the image, then you need internet connection. 
it will not work without internet connection because the image is not in your file the image is online you need internet connection so now i have this is my image and i created a folder now if you don't know how to create a folder let me create a folder again this second icon will allow you create a folder so i'll click on it and i'll call it images so i will drag my image i downloaded and drop it on the image folder here so now this image is inside my project directory it is now inside my project directory so let's say i want to add the second the third image i'll put an image tag my alt test will be bmw car and save it so if I come back to my browser and refresh my browser, I'm seeing BMW car here, but just the text. That's because I haven't added the source of the image. So this image is currently in my project directory. To find it, I will do dot. Dot means my current directory. Dot means the current directory i'm current the current folder let me use the layman language the current folder i am currently on the slash means bring out everything in the current folder so dot slash bring out everything in the current folder let me select the part so i will go to images and then i will select bmw so this is how to add image when you downloaded the image let me do that again first thing first i will put now some person don't put dot it's not composite to put dots you can just type images forward slash bmw like this you can do that but i like be uh, doing it very well so that i don't make mistake in case i have a large project so i put dot and slash so that it will bring out everything and i will select images and then bmw and save it if i come here and refresh now i have now the bmw is too big no problem with css you can make it smaller and resize it however you want but the most important thing is that you are adding it properly with your html so ladies and gentlemen that is how to add images any question on how to add images or any question on what you have done so far any question no question any question on what we have done so far no question all right in the absence of any question before we end the class okay some persons are typing yes wisdom go ahead do you need the mic where is wisdom go ahead wisdom Unmute yourself and ask your question. Or if you want to type, go ahead, type whatever you want to type. Yes, the images folder. Now it depends on how you create the folder. You see that this my introduction folder is here. Any folder I create now will be inside this folder. To confirm that, I just need to go to where I have that folder, is in Career X here, and Cohort 2, and Introduction. Now you see I have my images, and I have this random image I created. The reason why you must open this folder first is so that whatever you do from then onward will be stored inside that project directory. 
That's why you must open a folder first before you start writing your codes. Create a folder, open that folder with VS Code before you start writing any code so that whatever codes you write, whatever images you use, all of them will be stored inside that folder. All right. I think that being said, any other question? Any other question? So in the absence of any question, I want somebody who's going to give us an introductory speech as a student. Um, let me pick somebody who can just give us an introductory speech before we end the class. Who wants to go first or should I pick random? No, 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 no. I was not inside the folder. Now, because I have already opened the folder with my VS code here, you're seeing this folder name here. Because I've already opened it here, I don't need to go to the folder to do anything again. Whatever I do here will be stored inside the folder. Whatever I do here will be stored inside the folder because I can see the name of the folder here. So it's important that when you open the folder, make sure you are seeing the name of the folder here so that whatever you do from then will be stored inside that folder. All right. So who wants to give us an introductory speech? Who is, or should I pick at random? Should I pick Tumbom Tumbom? Uh, who should I pick or who wants to voluntarily do it before we end the class? Yeah, I know you are not prepared, but I'm also not prepared. So let's do it like that. Who wants to do it? I saw somebody typing. Uh, where is this guy? Okay, what's your name? Real one. Okay, real one wants to do it. Where is real one? The call. You are not on the. Okay, go ahead. Real one, go ahead. Give us an introductory speech. Say something from. This is our first time together. Good evening, everyone. Just want to hear some. Yeah, good evening. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Edo Real One. So I'm so glad to be here to, you know, join the okay. um, CareerX training program. And so far, this um, three hours okay. um, class that we had today, I've learned a lot. Although I quite have like um, a, an introductory knowledge in coding and XML and so, but today I was okay. able to reinstate my knowledge more be able to revise okay. some of the things that are forgotten. So based on this first class, it shows that the classes to come, I should expect more, and my hopes are really high. And I'm expecting more. I'm expecting to um, learn more, improve my knowledge more from this program. All right. Thank you so much. And so I want one more, somebody who's going to like assess today's class. Was I too fast? Somebody who's going to tell me how today's class went. Is there something I should do better? How would you like the teaching process? Should I continue like this? Okay, Victoria wants to go ahead. Victoria, go ahead, unmute yourself and go ahead. Tell us, should we continue like this or is there something we should do different? Or should we stop using Telegram altogether and find something else? Good evening, everyone. Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is Jaja Victoria and I'm really excited to be a part of this program. I love okay. the teaching. I have never had any knowledge in back end. Yes, and I, I enjoy the teaching so much. I love your pace. You take it really slow and you explain everything in details. 
and thank you. you you yes yes you explain everything in details in a layman's language you know i've always felt like i would not be able to do back end but i think with today's teaching i will i know i'll enjoy the whole process thank you all right so we should continue like this yes we should continue like this all right thank you so finally um what we we'll do is on the general platform i'll go first i would like everybody to drop their name and location um name where where is the general here so general sorry my name is david sorry hi i'm saying something else and i'm typing something else. david samson and I am in Port Harcourt. Okay, what else do I want? What else do I want? What else do I want? That's all. So, David Samson, Port Harcourt. So, we should all go ahead and drop that. And see you tomorrow by 5 p.m. 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Bye.